Good morning, everyone. Kia ora. Happy New Year. Welcome to 2023. It's amazing to be here with you this morning because I can hardly believe it's New Year already. And um, I'm really looking forward to spending some time with you and talking about Cobblestones Chronicles. I'm Jeanette Wallace-Gedge. I'm one of the trustees of Cobblestones Chronicles. And um, what I do here every second Thursday morning is I chat with you about cobblestones and about the history of the Wairarapa and uh, particularly to do with farming and horticulture as it relates to cobblestones, which is the heritage village in Greytown. And we have six heritage listed buildings on the site um, surrounded by two acres of beautiful gardens and they really are beautiful at this time of the year. So I would encourage you to pop along to Cobblestones, come through and um, bring a picnic if you like, use picnic in the grounds, have a look around the buildings, learn a little bit more about the history of the Wairarapa because it's great, it's really great. Everyone who comes to visit us says, it's so fantastic. We really, really enjoyed it. And we had no idea this was here. So from the front, a lot of people see our picket fence and they sometimes get a little distracted by shock chocolate, which is right next door to us. In fact, um, the building that shock is in is one of our buildings and it's used as their chocolate factory and their sales. And I've got to say that Shock Chocolates are very generous with giving you tastings of all the delicious chocolates that they make. I can totally recommend going in. And if you um, make a purchase and become a member of their um, Chocolate Lovers Club, then they give you a little treat on your birthday when you go in and make a purchase. So. I hope um, you will come and visit us soon. So today I'm going to talk a little bit more about how some of the streets in Carterton, Greytown, Featherstone and Martinborough got their names because it's really interesting to find out how streets got their names and so many of them were named after our early settlers and it's great to be able to tell you a little bit about them. But before I do that, what I would like to do is play you a song. So I thought I'd start off by playing a song called Waikari Iti, written by Niels Gedge. Um, it's got backing vocals by Marianne Carter and Amanda O'Connor, and the Karanga at the start by Amanda O'Connor. And the Karanga is, of course, a welcome. So I would like to play it for you. It's uh, a song about not somewhere in the Wairarapa, it's a little bit further north and near. It's a beautiful lake in the middle of the Uruera and it's um, it's up above Lake, uh, the, the major lake there. But Waikariiti is a little secret lake and I totally recommend going and visiting it. So here we go with Waikariiti. I've been driving on a gravel road Past the hills and through the bends To this lonesome lake I love Where the forest never ends No, it never ends And my heart went out on a journey My heart took a track of its song Track of its song And I walk up to the waiting lake Once I took you there Hear the fat Carreru fly Crash landing somewhere And I recall 
You laughed so suddenly My heart just sank like a stone Sank like a stone The echoes of your laughter The echoes of your laughter They're still here The echoes of your laughter The echoes of your laughter I can hear them everywhere Time has etched and shaped the silent place Now it waits, so calm and still Life has left its mark on my face Time is gentle, time is cruel And the seasons move so slowly Seasons have no end have no end I've been driving on a gravel road past the hills through the bend to the lonesome lake I love where the forest never ends My heart went out on a journey My heart took a track of its own A track of its own Why carry it in? Why carry it in? Waikaraiti, the little secret lake, just um, a little higher up than Wai, than Waika, Wai, Wai Moana. Sorry, I'm a bit of a tongue-tied time this morning. So I thought I'd um, talk about some of the streets in Greytown now, because in fact um, Greytown is quite an interesting place, and in it has an, a North Street, a West Street, and an East Street. Obviously not very imaginative sometimes, um, but at least you know where you are because the North Street is obviously the furthest one north. The West Street is was probably the most westerly street and East Street was probably originally the most easterly street, but it's very easy to find your way around. But we have lots of streets named after mayors and some of our early settlers. So, Kempton Street, which is one of the major streets that runs parallel to West Street, is named after Thomas Kempton. He was one of the most prominent businessmen in the early years of Greytown. He was one of the very first settlers in town, having previously been active in the Small Farms Association. He was on the town board, and even more significantly, he was Greytown's first mayor. Thomas Kempton was born in London in 1801. He arrived in New Zealand in 1840, having sailed on the Adelaide. He and his family set up home at Seatoon, where they remained for 14 years. Kempton Sr. was a successful businessman, running a number of different businesses, until he died in Greytown in 1889. His son, also Thomas Kempton, was a carter, then a miller in Greytown, as well as operating a number of other retail activities. He also built and operated the hotel called the Rising Sun on the site opposite where Cobblestone's Museum is. He was a member of the first Greytown Borough Council, serving under his father, the mayor, and the younger Kempton later moved to Elm Grove on the Moroa Plain and became a successful farmer. And of course, his descendants are still there. 
on the Maroa Plain farming to this day. And Sid Kempton, um, who would be, I guess, his great-great-grandson probably, um, is very active in the community and is currently um, encouraging the uh, the development of a stick skate park, which I think is a great idea, a stick skate park for youngsters to keep them busy, and some of us not so youngsters too. Um, Udy Street runs off North Street between North Street and Kuritafiti Street. And Udy Street is named after the various members of the family of Greytown's third mayor, Hart Udy. The family has had a lasting impact on Greytown. Hart Udy Sr. was born in 1808 in Cornwall, where he was apprenticed to a builder. He came to New Zealand in 1840 on the Duke of York, Roxburgh and worked for Sir Francis Molesworth in Lower Hutt. Hart Udy is reported to have built the first house and was the first cutter out of New Zealand timbers. He lived in Whaifetu until 1857 when he went saw milling in Stokes Valley. He later moved to Matarawa where he also worked his sawmill until 1865 when he is said to have retired. And we believe that the boards for the church which is in Cobblestones and which is the first church in the Wairarapa, built in the Wairarapa, the boards to build that church came from the UD sawmill in Matarawa. So Mr Udy was a member of the Petoni Town Board and he served in the Volunteer Rifles. He preached at the local Methodist church and he was Mayor of Greytown. Hart Udy Jr., also born in Cornwall, father, followed his father in many ways. He started working for his father when only nine and then followed him into the sawmilling business. He also served as Greytown's Mayor. Another of Hart Udy's sons, William Udy, spent a term as U Greytown's mayor. William was involved in farming in both Wairarapa and Otaki and was a director of the New Zealand Farmers Dairy Union. It's amazing to think that there are Udys still around the Wairarapa as there are Camptons still around the Wairarapa. Families have been around here for a long time. There was um, F. H. Wood as well, who was Greytown's fourth mayor. He was an able businessman who resided in Greytown for nearly 30 years, making a significant impact on the commercial and civic life of his new town. He had been born in London in 1849, where he trained as a commercial clerk in the city before migrating to Melbourne in 1867. In 1874, he shipped across the Tasman and, following a brief spell in Wellington, travelled to Greytown, where he opened the first sale yards and auctioning business. He eventually had branches in Carterton, Featherstone and Martinborough, and he later sold his chain of stores to Dalgetty's. So, Mr Wood had Wood Street named after him. Because he was mayor of Greytown on four occasions, he was on the Greytown Trust Lands Trust and was a justice of the peace. He left Greytown early in the 20th century, shifting to Tauranga as an auctioneer and then moving to Auckland where he was a financial advisor and he was also chairman of the Epsom Road Board. F. H. Wood died in Auckland in 1941 and his son, F. H. Wood, also served on the Great Hound Borough Council for 10 years. Now, I'm sorry, but I don't know what the F. H. stands for. I will try and find out. Interesting that he's referred to as Mr. F. H. Wood, which um, I think was very typical of the 19th and early 20th centuries. I want to talk now about Wakelin. So Richard Alfred Wakelin was born in 1845 at Barnacle Hall near Coventry in England. 
His father was Richard Wakelin, sometimes called the father of New Zealand journalism, and he brought his family to New Zealand in about 1850. Wakelin Jr. was not to follow his father into journalism, but instead established himself as a successful builder and contractor. He had substantial business interests in and around Greytown, including a joinery factory in the town and a farm on the banks of the Rumahunga River. He built the Wairarapa Hospital in Greytown and the Bank of New Zealand building, on which he is said to have lost money due to neglecting to include the cost of the substantial chimney in his quote. He also built a number of other prominent buildings in the township, in the township, including Wakeland House. As well as serving a term as Greytown Mayor, he was involved in the Greytown Working Men's Club, which is, of course, one of the oldest working men's clubs in the country. He served in the Volunteers and was a renowned marksman, winning the Wairu Rapper Challenge Cup. He shifted to the Wellington area in 1900 following business reversals and re-established himself as a contractor in the capital, flourishing once more. And Richard Alfred Wakelin died in 1910. It's amazing to see that there are place street names named after people. Now, how about I play you another song now? Um, I have a lovely, rather lovely um, tune from the Windy City Strugglers, whom I'm sure a lot of you know, and it's called Sitting on Top of the World. And I'm sure you'll enjoy this, because we are sitting on top of the world, and it's a new year. Here you go, the Windy City Strugglers. <laughs>
sitting on top of the world from the Windy City Strugglers. Um, I want to tell you now about some exciting developments in cobblestones because we are going to have a lovely late afternoon, early evening of music. And it's not going to be the Windy City Strugglers. It's going to be a group called the Zimmermans. And there's some very well-known faces in there, former members of the Wooden Box Band, the Mockers, um, Kim Bonington, Paddy Bergen, just a fantastic band. They are going to do a two-hour foot stomping, absolutely cracking show of all Bob Dylan's music. It's just awesome. It really is. And it's going to be a great late afternoon. It's on the 22nd of January. So we're keeping our fingers crossed for the weather. Please keep your eye on our Facebook page and our website. And you can buy tickets through Event Finder or you can buy them at Cobblestones. And we're just going to have a grand afternoon. There's going to be an opening act by um, Dragonfly, local band Dragonfly, who are based out of Y College. And they are they will young band, just another great band who will set the scene with a great opening set. And then we'll be able to, we'll have a cash bar so you can sit on the lawn and have a drink or two. There'll be loads of lovely yummy food for sale or you can bring your own picnic. Feel free to do that. And we're just going to have a cracking afternoon. It's just going to be such fun. And after all the disappointments we've had, things cancelled, postponed, all kinds of stuff, we'll really look forward to it and look forward to seeing you there. Okay, so on with um, telling you about some of the streets in Great Anne, named after our mayors. So, Lowesby Place. D.P. Lowesby was an Australian-born trader who decided to settle in Greytown in the late 1870s, where he followed his trade as a bookmaker. After a term farming, he returned to commerce, opening and running a general store. In 1891, he moved back to his old trade and opened a large shop to house his boot and shoe importing business. Later still, he moved into the fruit growing business. And of course, so many of the small holdings and small farms around Greytown were perfectly suited for to fruit growing because, as I know from my own garden, we are built on a riverbed and it's um, the soil is just beautiful. A bit stony. <laughs> you have to contend with lots of stones, but it's, um, it's a lovely soil and certainly grows really well. I've got to say my tomatoes are doing very fine this year. So in um, throughout his career, he was always involved in community affairs and public bodies. Mr. Lowesby held positions in the Oddfellows Lodge at local and provincial level. He was secretary and treasurer for the Greytown Working Men's Club, chairman of the Greytown Trust Lands Trust for 30 years, chairman of the Greytown Fruit Company, director of the Greytown Picture Company, and for 12 years from 1907, mayor of Greytown. That means he was Greytown's 17th mayor, the first 16 mayors having served a total of 26 years. When Greytown Trust Lands Trust opened up a subdivision off East Street in the mid-1970s, Lowesby's name was put to one of the small streets, so he is recorded as on Lowesby Place, which is along East Street. Lovely man, obviously very civic-minded. And I have to say that I'm very much indebted to Gareth Winter for the information in this book that I'm using. It's called um, Streetwise, how the streets of Carterton, Greytown, Featherstone and Martinborough got their names. Fascinating stuff. Um, a couple more mayors of Greytown. Horton Street, 
A.W. Horton, known to all and sundry as Mick, was Greyhound's mayor from 1935 until 1959. He was English-born and had come to New Zealand as a 14-year-old when his family immigrated. The family was involved in fruit growing in the Nelson area and Mick Horton started his working life as his uncle's butchery in Nelson before working in a variety of freezing works. In 1921, he made his way to Greytown with his new bride and £600 in his pocket, determined to do well for himself and his family. He bought Tom Strayton's butchery and continued to operate the shop until his retirement in 1975. He was elected to the Greytown Borough Council in 1927 and won the mayoralty in 1935. He was a Justice of the Peace, a member of the Masonic Lodge, and was a founding member of the Greytown Hospital Buchanan Trust. And Mick Horton lived on until he passed away in 1985. And seemingly he was quite a, a, a real gentleman. So finally, mayors, uh, streets named after mayors in Greytown. Fred Yule was Greytown Mayor for no less than 18 years, and Yule Grove is named after him. He first served on the Greytown Borough Council for 23 years after first being elected in 1953. Yule, who was born in 1909, was also heavily involved in other community activities, serving on the Greytown School Committee, the District High School Committee, the Wellington Education Board and the Carterton Racing Club. He was in the difficult position of chairing the Wairarapa Hospital Board during some of the restructuring at Greytown Hospital. He was always a popular figure and he was awarded the Queen's Service Medal in 1978 and he died in 1987 and I'm sure was much missed. So that brings us to the end of the streets which are named after mayors because obviously in Greytown we don't do much naming after mayors. We name the streets after other people. So I will play us another song now. I thought I'd play a song um, called Southern Sky which is from the EP um, made by um, some friends of mine. They're a young group. They call themselves progressive bluegrass so they're bluegrass but they're a New Zealand style of bluegrass and they're called You, Me, Everybody I hope you enjoy this Southern Sky So far away, sharp and ridge lines cutting through the day. The wind blows cold, a bitter song of old, whispered through the night like many times before. There's a light that burns in your eyes, and it's burning me up on the inside, like the stars that shine so bright. Years that go by, wonder if I'll ever wonder why. The road will never take you where you wanna be. That's on you to stay true, give more than what is free. There's a light that burns and cries, and it's burning me up on the inside, like the stars that shine so bright. Wish that I could cry under the southern.
There's a light that burns in your eyes And it's burning me up on the inside Like the stars that shine so bright The hills never seem so far away Sharp and rich lines cutting through the day The wind blows cold, the bitter song of old Whisper through the night like many times before There's a light that burns in your eyes And it's burning me up on the inside Like the stars that shine so bright When the doubt gets into my mind And it burns me up on the inside like the stars that shine so bright Wish that I could fly Under the southern skies You, me, everybody, and Southern Sky. Isn't that just delightful? And they are a youngish group um, who are just fantastic, really going for it with lovely blue gas sounds. And um, Lawrence, who you've heard singing on there, is also a luthier. He makes guitars. He makes limelight guitars. So if you want to buy a new guitar... Um, I'm told I don't play guitar myself, but I know people who do play guitar and are quite picky about it. And, and oh dear, I didn't mean that pun. That was terrible. Um, so you can listen to uh, him playing his guitars on that on that CD. And you can also have a look online for Limelight Guitars. So, Greytown Streets follow another pattern often and are named after early settlers and others who have made a significant contribution to the town. So Cotter Street is named in honour of the pioneer settler Pierce Cotter. Irish-born Cotter went to Australia in 1840 as a 25-year-old and operated a schooner ferrying goods between Sydney and Tasmania. He was also a trader. He then came across the Tasman and settled in Wellington, where he opened large timber yards, supplying the local market and also exporting New Zealand timber to the Victorian goldfields. He later moved to Silverstream, where he established a mill and also ventured into the carrying business. He continued his move north by buying land in Greytown and continuing his sawmilling interests. He also started sheep farming and flax milling. He was a successful sheep farmer, but flax milling wasn't quite so successful. His land at the southern end of Greytown was sometimes known as Cotterville, and the unformed extension of South Street to Cotter Street is sometimes called Pierce Street. So Pierce Cotter died in June in 1894 in Greytown after an exciting life. And, of course, we have Hastwell Street in Greytown. And at Cobblestones, we are lucky enough to have the original Hastwell stables. And Cobblestones is called Cobblestones because of all the beautiful cobbles that are in front of the stables and indeed extend right across towards almost to, shock, to the Shock Chocolate Building because... The stables needed to have cobbles in front of them because we were the place where the it was a bit of a hub. So coaches would come over the hill and then they would rest in Greytown and then they would go on up the line towards Palmerston North, Napier and further north, uh, Gisborne and all up to the Uruera and then also out to the coast, to uh, Martinborough. So 
it was a hub, a kind of like a, a changing station, but we didn't change horses because what we did was it wasn't like the Cobb and Cow or the Wild West where they changed the horses and dashed off into the sunset. No, it was a bit more civilised than that. They had a drink or two, a meal at the um, Rising Sun. In those days, uh, early days, it would probably have been mutton because... There was a lot of mutton eaten because we didn't export it, did we? Not until uh, the 1890s because there was no way of refrigerating it. The first refrigerated export took place in the early 1890s from down south um, near to uh, Omaru. So... um, I can't quite remember the date. I think it was 1892, but I could be wrong. I'll check that out. So anyway, back to Hastwell. He he was the energetic son of a Westmoreland carter who settled in New Zealand at the time Greytown was being formed. He first worked on Ridifer's Te Awa Iti station, but soon saw better prospects in working in his father's trade of a carter. Accordingly, he established a mail and carrying service over the Rumatakas and settled in Greytown to run it. He was to become a prominent member of a number of public bodies, including the First Town Board and the First Borough Council. He was also active in St Luke's Parish on the Greytown School Committee and on the River Board. When he died in December 1879, his obituary stated he had started as a carrier with one horse and ended up with a number of different lines of coaches. Hastwell is a district north of Morrisville, is named after him as well as the original Hastwell's clearing, recalls an early staging post for Hastwell's passenger service to the 40-mile bush. So he was a very prominent person and we're so lucky to have his original stables and the cobbles in cobblestones. So when you come and see them, you can think about William Hastwell setting up, coming all the way from Westmoreland in the north of England and setting up as a carter and running the dangerous because, of course, crossing the Rumatakis in those days was de- very dangerous. It's a bit exciting these days with the road, but in those days it was much worse. So Humphrey Street is the street which goes up to the station, of course. William Humphreys was a soldier who came to New Zealand as a member of the 65th Regiment. After his military service, Humphreys made a living at Taita in the Hutt Valley, Following the disastrous floods of 1858, he moved further north where he and his wife Mary Ann and their family camped on land opposite the Rising Sun, the land that now houses the Cobblestones Museum. Humphreys later took up a town acre and a 40-acre section, which was, of course, where the road went through. And that's why the road is called Humphreys Road and later now known as Humphrey Street. William Humphreys died in 1875 and his wife in 1902 and they were very much involved in setting up the town as one of the original settlers. McMaster Street, which is in the middle of town, has a curious history part of it having been called Vogel Street, where the other part wasn't a street for many years. The first part of McMaster Street to be constructed was the section east from East Street and was named after one of New Zealand's most charismatic politicians, Sir Julius Vogel. Vogel, who was born in London in 1835 and was to die in London 64 years later, made his way to New Zealand from Victoria. He was first a journalist. He soon became involved in politics and he's best remembered for his policy of substantial borrowing to assist immigration and public works. A gifted writer with his novel to his credit, he also wrote the official handbook to New Zealand in 1875, the precursor to the New Zealand yearbook. So the land between Main Street and Vogel Street was part of the estate of Angus McMaster. 
who'd arrived in New Zealand in 1842 on the Blenheim and worked as the overseas overseer on the Wellington to Hutt Valley Road. He was soon in business on his own account and he farmed in the Wairarapa from about 1847. His Tui Tata property in South Wairarapa formed the basis of his farming activities, but he also owned land in Tupu Puru Puru near Gladstone. McMaster's wife, Mary Mackenzie, was reputed to be the first white woman seen in the Wairarapa, and their son, Hugh McMaster, was said to be the first white child born in the district. Both Angus and his son, Hugh, retired to Greytown, where they died, Angus in 1888 and Hugh in 1902, so not much later. When the Greytown Borough Council wanted to extend Vogel Street through to Main Street, they asked for land from the McMaster Estate, and it was given on the condition that the street be planted with deciduous trees and named after them. So the section between Main and East Street was named McMaster in honour of the family. In the 1925 renaming of many of the town streets, the name Vogel was dropped and McMaster was applied to the whole street. So the last remaining street I'm going to talk about today is Mole Street. So Mole is named after one of the first parties to settle in Greytown, the town's first postmaster, Samuel Moles. Moles had been born in England and made his way to New Zealand via Tasmania, as many of our settlers did. He and his family settled on section number five in the centre of the small town. The town at the time was just a surveyor's line running through dense bush, but there was a little clearing on Moles section, a clearing that contained a skull held on a stick. Needless to say, the clearing quickly became known as Maori Skull or Skull's Clearing. We're not too clear why it was why it was there, but that's remained as the name. As well as establishing himself as a farmer, Mole ran a store for Dr. Welsh and later opened one on his own account. Later he sold his store to Mayor Castleberg and Mole built a small reading room on Main Street. Samuel Moles was very involved in the community. He was secretary of the Greytown School Committee, was on the inaugural Greytown Trust Lands Trust and was one of the first directors of the Permanent Investment and Loan Company. Samuel Moles died in Greytown in July 1873. So when I come back in a couple of weeks' time, I'll actually make sure that I bring some information about the Great Town Trust Lands Trust because last year was the 150th anniversary and Great Town Trust Lands Trust is one of the, um, is one of two of their type in New Zealand and it was very forward-thinking of the settlers to set, who set these up. Right, well, I thought now I might play a tune called Wild by um, Alan Downs. And Alan Downs um, is a friend of ours, and he and his wife Vivian came down on the weekend. They live in the Hawke's Bay. Um, Alan was a hill country farmer for many years. He calls himself a recovering farmer. He stopped farming uh, at least uh, 15 years ago. But... um, he said that um, he writes tunes about farming and about life as a farmer. And from what I hear about life as a farmer in the Wairarapa, in fact, a friend of ours who is a far- Wairarapa farmer was there when he was playing, um, said, you know, this just echoes. This absolutely echoes. This is about same kind of life that, we had in the 50s, 60s and 70s in the Wairarapa. And this is about having a a, a party on a Saturday night. And I have to say that at New Year, 
We have a big old shed on our property. Seems a little excessive on two and a half acres, but there you go. That, we inherited it, and it's a great party place. So we had a little bit of a wild party with Alan was playing along with some other musicians, and it was great fun. And I just wanted to recognise that we had a wonderful way to bring in the new year, very traditionally in a shed with a bit of a bush band. So here we go with a little bit of wild from Alan Downs. Well, it's a 21st or an anniversary, a party or just a barn dance. Way on up the Booker Tea Tree Road, all the neighbours' cars are parked. A beer keg at the end of the shearing board, a food mountain on the wool table. There's a three-piece band that's ringing the rafters, everybody's dancing like crazy. It's a Saturday night in the countryside, everybody's looking for a little bit of wild. Take the road to the shearing shed for a band and a beer and a country good time. But don't look back, don't you look back Tomorrow's the best that you can have On the other side of midnight in the cold light of day All you will remember is a rock and roll band Was it good what you had? Well, the agent's kissing the neighbor's wife There's a shepherd chatting a stranger The sheep on the spit is catching fire But a cold beer puts the flames up There's whiskey and vodka, gin with your tonic Wine, though the beer is fast going the mini tank of the guys bought from town was drained about 9.30. Saturday night in the countryside, everybody's looking for a little bit of wild. Take the road to the shear and shed for a band and a beer and a country good time. But don't look back, don't you look back. Tomorrow's the best that you can have. On the other side of midnight in the cold light of day, all you will remember is a rock and roll band. Was it good what you had? Well, everybody's happy and exceedingly chatty. The All Blacks just won a test match. The season was mellow. We're all looking forward to a lambing we hope is benevolent. The look in the eye of the new neighbor's wife. Is she coming on or is she already gone? You fancy your chances with her advances, but you can't remember what her name was. It's Saturday night in the countryside. Everybody's looking for a little bit of wild. Take the road to the shearing shed for a band and a beer and a country good time. But don't look back, don't you look back. Tomorrow's the best that you can have. On the other side of midnight in the cold light of day, all you will remember is a rock and roll band. Was it good what you had? And there she is, the local identity, a knowing smile of familiarity. Running away with your imagination, alcohol undermines best intentions. Well, there's farmers and shepherds, agents and truckers, a fencer, mechanic and pilot. Wives and children, aunts and uncles, the woolshed party is a riot. It's Saturday night in the countryside, everybody's looking for a little bit of wild. Take the road to the shearing shed for a band and a beer and a country good time. But don't look back, don't you look back Tomorrow's the best that you can have On the other side of midnight in the cold light of day All you will remember is a rock and roll band Was it good what you had? So having insulted the new neighbor's wife Tipped beer down the stock agent's trousers Dropped Pavlova on the land girl's pullover Drunk beer from a gumbo to Skype well, the band plays on all the best-known songs, your dancing style is extended. It's a Saturday night, wild wool shed dance, where a good time best not remembered. Saturday night in the countryside, everybody's looking for a little bit of wild. Take the road to the shearing shed for a band and a beer and a country good time. But don't look back, don't you look back Tomorrow's the best that you can have On the other side of midnight in the cold light of day All you will remember is a rock and roll band Well it's a 21st or an anniversary A party or just a barn dance Way on up the Booker Tea Tree Road All the neighbours' cars are parked A beer keg at the end of the shearing board A food mountain on the wool table there's a three-piece band that's ringing the rafters. Everybody's dancing like crazy. It's a Saturday night.
Wild from Alan Downs' CD, um, Moving On. A great song, and um, as I, I, I told Alan, I grew up in uh, South Ayrshire in Scotland, and um, it sounds, it reminds me, the whole country here reminds me very much of Ayrshire because it's coastal flat, um, dairy, and then as you move up into the hills, it's sheep. So you, uh, it really reminds me of the Wairarapa and all up the east coast, um, up into the Hawke's Bay. It's a very similar country. And um, I think I spent quite a few Saturday nights having a good time in the wool shed for 21st, 18th birthdays, um, after after rugby games, if the local team won, because we were a rugby playing area. Um, and I went to the school that I went to in Ayr um, had a, a very successful rugby team. So it was very important to go and celebrate, of course. And um, it just reminds me so much of um, my slightly misspent youth great fun to have so and if you want to come along and have a really good time um on the 22nd of january at cobblestones we'll be doing uh the zimmermans um who will play some great dancing music and they are just so infectious their their music is fabulous you will love it and of course you'll recognize a lot of it although some of it might be quite new because they play some different uh Bob Dylan songs and they play them in a somewhat different style sometimes um, very uh, rocky and ready to go so um, that's about it for me this week I just wanted to say thank you for listening please do if you have anything you want to say to me you can go on to Cobblestone's Facebook page and send me a message I pick up the messages from the Facebook page and um, we'll be Having, uh, I'll be back in two weeks' time to talk more about the history behind cobblestones and the history behind the street names in Wairarapa and other bits and pieces. And if there's anything you'd like to know, get in touch. Thank you for being with me. Have a great day today. Bye. <laughs>